Several months before the inauguration of President Vladimir Putin in May 2024, representatives of the Russian Defense Ministry insisted on a new stage of mobilization, but the Russian dictator rejected this idea, writes the Wall Street Journal. The head of the Kremlin, according to the publication, said that he wants to use only contract soldiers to replenish troops and compensate for losses at the front, but now he is under intense pressure. Since in almost three years of war, the Russian armed forces have lost about one million people killed and wounded. The mobilization could have serious political consequences for Putin, the media notes. But at the same time, Russia is losing more soldiers on the battlefield than it can recruit to replace them. The article says, the forces are currently insufficient to achieve the original goals of the war, to remove Ukraine from the conflict, to undermine its military potential or to protect the border areas of Russian territory. More and more people say that mobilization is inevitable, the media source said. Journalists report that during the first wave of mobilization in the Russian Federation, during which the occupiers planned to add 300,000 people to the army, the Russian authorities faced protests and the need to close the border in some regions. According to their data, although Russia has an advantage in population compared to Ukraine, the shortage of personnel remains a serious problem for them. Russia did not commit to sending key frontline forces to Kursk, but given its limitations, it was forced to redeploy troops from Kherson and Zaporozhye where they were less needed, said Rob Lee, a senior fellow at the Foreign Policy Research Institute, an American think tank. By some estimates, Russia is recruiting around 1,000 people a day, while according to the UK, the occupiers are losing around 1,100 soldiers a day at the front. As the article says, Russian leaders are not announcing a new wave of mobilization because of concerns that this process will upset the fragile balance of how society perceives the war. This could have dangerous political consequences for Putin. The independent sociological service Levada Center in Russia published the results of a survey in which 46% of the population of the aggressor country admitted to fearing mobilization. This is 12% more than in February 2024. The problems with the Russian Federation's arms shortage, which the head of Ukrainian intelligence, Kirill Budanov, recently mentioned, really exist, and Ukraine is not passing off wishful thinking as reality. This was stated by the military political observer of the information resistance group Alexander Kovalenko on air at Kiev 24. It is enough to open Google Maps, look at the situation in Russia with warehouses, storage arsenals and storage centers across the territory and everything falls into place. There is no need to even give in to doubts. In addition, if everything was fine with the Russian Federation, with a mechanized component, equipment, first of all, then why would it be turning to the whole world, to African countries, for example, the same Sudan with an offer to buy out Soviet equipment, tanks that were transferred to these countries? They are also constantly looking for equipment in Central Asia that they can buy out from those countries that can sell it. And they even turned to Latin American countries, Nicaragua, for example, Venezuela, with offers to buy out something. That is, the problem is obvious, and it will be more and more in Russia every day. Kovalenko noted, he stressed that the Russians were preparing for a war for several weeks, but got a war for several years and were not ready for this. The potential they had as of 2022 is now effectively leveled. Kovalenko noted that we are now emotionally talking about the advance in Donbass in the Pokrovsk direction near Ugledar. But we must react not with emotions, but from an analytical point of view. In 2022, the Russians had rates of advance and capture of hundreds and sometimes thousands of square kilometers per day. And now we are talking about their offensive capabilities, which do not consist of several directions, that is, from the north, from the east, from the south, at the same time with thousands of kilometers. But we are talking about a section of the front, Pokrovsko direction. Kurakovskoy and the Ugladar area, and there, the advance of Russian occupiers is either hundreds of meters per day or even less, Kovalenko emphasized. He recalled that in three months of summer in the Pokrovsky direction, where the occupiers are conducting the most active military operations, the enemy troops advanced 21 kilometers while they lost more than 1,000 personnel, not to mention a large amount of equipment. Here is a comparison. 
Yes, of course, the Russians will be able to advance in 2025. But at what pace? What areas will they be able to capture? And all this will concern both their offensive potential and, in the long term, defensive potential. This is what Mr. Budanov is talking about because he does not speak with emotions, but purely analytically with conclusions that he receives from the state of the Russian military industrial complex, as well as the ability of the Russian army to replenish its resources for the further implementation of plans. And their plans are to capture the entire territory of Ukraine. Will they be able to do this? No. If even now they have difficulty advancing through rural areas and capturing villages non-stop, Kovalenko said, 